Let's go back to Genesis. Genesis 30. The title of my message is Speckled and Spotted Nothings. Speckled and Spotted Nothings. Here in Genesis 30, verse 25. It says, and it came to pass, it came to pass, things do come to pass, don't they? And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, send me away, that I may go unto mine own place, unto my country. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service which I have done thee. What happened for this to come to pass? It says, and it came to pass. Absolutely everything throughout time. That's what came to pass and had to come to pass for this moment. The Lord will come to his child in this day and something's going to come to pass for you. Good, bad, ugly, or sideways. It took absolutely everything. God controlled everything for it to come to pass. Didn't he? Jacob left his father's land, didn't he? Where he had the right to everything. He had the firstborn's inheritance, didn't he? The full blessing of the firstborn. And he was told by his father to come to a specific place, to a specific family, and look for his bride. That's what come to pass. Did he find her? Did he marry her and then he bought a house next door and he wouldn't go see her? <laughs> didn't have. He didn't go back home, did he? He came for a bride. He took no wage other than his brides. Seven years each. And no matter how you see Leah and Rachel, we looked at that before. As some, you can rightfully so to say Leah's the Gentiles and Rachel's the Jews. And Rachel's the Jews and Leah's the Gentiles because it's more and we're uglier and <laughs> however you want to cut it. Um, or that that's a false church like we looked at and, and Rachel's the true church however you want to cut that whether it's Jew or Gentile because Jew or Gentile either way Christ is who purchased them in perfection he's the one who served well I'm, I'm, I'm circumcised but I'm un it don't matter you're gonna, if you're going to be bought you're going to have to be bought by him in perfection his perfect service there's neither Jew nor Greek nor bond nor free nor male nor female is there it doesn't matter we're all one in Christ Jesus our Lord. And he laid down his life once in perfection, complete service for his bride. That's what we're to see. Christ fulfilled the law ever jot and tittle. And those wives are a picture of Christ's bride. But we looked at that. And Laban, he's a temporary. He's a temporary type of the law. He had a requirement that had to be fulfilled. He had to be satisfied for Jacob to get his bride, didn't he? He had to be fulfilled, and he has been fulfilled at this point. That's what's come to pass. And the last child's born, and it's time for the whole family to go back to the promised land. You see anything, any themes in here? Christ came for his bride. The law is completely satisfied, and when that last child's born, we'll go home. Verse 27 says, And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry. If I found favor, stay with me. Because, for, I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. This is a picture. Laban's a temporary picture here of an unregenerate person, isn't it? Laban saw through experience that he was increased or blessed because the Lord was with Jacob. You know what happened to Abimelech? Remember when he was dealing with Abraham? And he said it came to pass at that time, back in Genesis 21, that came to pass too, didn't it? That Abimelech and Phicol, the chief captain of the host, spake to Abraham, saying, God is with thee in all that thou doest. The unregenerate person can know that. Demons know that there's one God. The devil knows that. It ought to be obvious, shouldn't it? 
there's some service members on a particular Brad, Bradley fighting vehicle that was in the rough parts of Iraq years ago, and they'll tell you to this day that things were different when I showed up. Things changed when you got here. And I, they said, ain't you scared? I said, why should I? I believe in God. They said, if he controls everything else, can't control these bullets? They said, you're weird. <laughs> I said, am I peculiar? And they said, you sure are. <laughs> they can tell you that. Things was different whenever he was around. A blood-bought child of God doesn't walk through this world like a child of their own. They're not chameleons that blend into everything. They stick out. Do we sin? Absolutely we do. But we're peculiar. There's something different. Something just different about that. Verse 27 again. Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I found favor in thine eyes, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. For thy sake. Isn't that what a believer says? Have you experienced this? Is this just something written down in a confession of faith? And Well, Spurgeon said it, so it's got to be true. <laughs> Have you lived it? Are you a witness? What does a witness do? You tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God, don't you? You just say what you saw. Have you experienced this? Have you been blessed because of Christ and him alone, because of his sake and only because of his sake? Has he proven his word to you over and over and over again? I believe him. I do. And it, it's just more. <laughs> he says, it keeps getting more magnificent. My sin grows and his glory grows. And that just happens. I've lived it. Have you? Or have we just memorized more facts? We've experienced this, haven't we? We learn to take, here's what, here's what sets you apart. You know, you'll be a weirdo in today's world. Take pleasure in your infirmities. You got arthritis. I'll send that to you. That lady woke up. She said she sees five men every day. So she wakes up and uh, arthritis is there. But her friend Ben Gay comes over, stays a while. Arthur likes to move. He goes from joint to joint. That's a good outlook. Be it. God's children, happy children. You know, a, a well, a happy child's a well loved child. I've told you that, ain't I? You think his children are well loved? They're happy. We go through sorrows. We there's infirmities. It's bad, but while we're in those infirmities, we're happy. We praise Him like we looked the first hour, don't we? He sent it, didn't he? We learn to take pleasure in our infirmities. The world says you're crazy. We've learned to take pleasure in our reproaches and our necessities and our persecutions and our distresses. Are you distressed? Why are you? It's for Christ's sake. Did you know that? That's the difference. That makes us different. Because for Christ's sake, these things have come. I'm blessed because of him. That's a blessing to have a trial. God chastens his own, doesn't he? That's what Paul say. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from him. He had a thorn, not a splinter. Thorn's different than a splinter, isn't it? He had a thorn in his flesh. And it hurt and th enough for three times. He stopped preaching and said, Lord, could you take care of me? Whew. He quit praying for those people who, who was always in his prayers. He stopped that and, and was self-serving for a little bit and said, Lord, help me. And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength's made perfect in weakness. And then Paul responded. He said, most gladly, there's happiness, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Why? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. People go yapping about the Holy Spirit being in places. Do you want the power of Christ to rest upon you? It's going to come in infirmities. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake for when i am weak then am i strong i must decrease he must increase now i tell you that sounds good when it's it's on a, a piece of paper on the wall and when god shows up and you experience it that really hurts and when you experience it he really is magnificent isn't he? that's so it's, it's and it's got to happen 
It's got, I look on these children. I said, they got, those got, they got trials. They have to go. I can tell them. I've experienced it. I have the wisdom to know what's going to happen in this world. I can tell you what things to do, don't do, and all this stuff. But you've got to go through it and learn it. You've got to do it yourself. And I look at you all, my children. And then what John said, my little children, you all my little children. And I see what's coming. I know what trials you're going to have to face. I know what the Lord's going to do. And I can tell you all about it. But he's going to prove his word to you. And I'm just going to be one that reads it out loud. <laughs> I know that. I know that. He must increase. That's the power of Christ being upon you. Well, it's absolutely miserable. I mean bad. And you say, God did this to me. I'm going to see Christ at this. I'm going to see him at the end of this. I know it. It's happened before. I've experienced it. It's going to happen again. Like I read before, we, you think the way we talk, the way I talk, well, do you talk that way? Do you think that God is nothing but good or is he nothing but evil? Belly aching and moaning and I'm a murmuring people, Bob. Murmur all the time, don't I? If any person is blessed with eternal life, it is solely because for Christ's sake, because of him, isn't it? And if he's blessed you, doesn't that make you want to be a blessing to others? If you're happy, don't you want to tell somebody else about being happy? If you're a well-loved child, don't you want them other children to be well-loved? Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Get over it. Move on. Let it go. All right? Why? The, the Lord moved on. There's no condemnation on us, is there? But poor Laban here, he was self-serving. He's a picture of this world in this passage. Look here at verse 28 again. He said, appoint me thy wages and I'll give it. You going to stay here? I know I'm getting, I'm coming out pretty good on this deal. Lord's, I'm secondary beneficiary of you. <laughs> Lord's blessing you and I'm coming out good. You tell me what your wages are and I'll give it to you. Like a real good salesman. Did he make an offer to Jacob up front? He didn't, did he? He said, you tell me what you need. You tell me how much it's going to take. Laban did not want to give any more than he had to. He wasn't abundantly generous. He wanted to meet the absolute minimum to get Jacob to stick around. He wanted to buy low and sell high, didn't he? What's that a picture of for us? The world's not out for your benefit. They're going to lie, cheat, and steal, and if they can use you for a nickel, they will. Smiling the whole time. The world's contrary to you. Why do we worry so much about it? Why do we get in tizzies? Because the newsman says something. Because something's going on on the other side of the world. It ought not, should they? Jacob replies to his wages. Look here at verse 29. He said unto him, Thou knowest how I've served thee. You look me dead in the eye. You know how I served you? He does, don't he? He said, Do you know how I've served you? How thy cattle was with me? All your cattle. That was the most important thing to Laban, wasn't it? Did Jacob show up and serve him and he gave him a whole mess of cattle? No, he gave him the bride he didn't serve for. He tricked him. He said, well, I can two birds with one stone, man. All right, <laughs> get rid of this one. That, that's, that's rude to, that's uh, wrong. It's wrong. You get it? It's wrong to Jacob. It, it's wrong to his daughters, to Leah and Rachel, for him to switch them around like that. That's just flat wrong. It's wrong for the people that's underneath his control. Those in his own house. He has not governed his house well. That's a bad example. It's wrong. He said, I dealt with your cattle. You liked them better than them girls, didn't you? <laughs> That's what she's looking out for. And he says, verse 30, For it was little which thou hast before I came, and now is increased to a multitude. Before He hasn't said how much he wanted you, did he? He just reminded him. He said, I've kept that thing that's most important to you, and you are busting at the seams. Business is booming because of me. And the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming. And now when shall I provide for my own house also? I've done nothing but take care of you for 14 years. And you've, ex you've just been booming. And I ain't even looked after my own house. Jacob served faithfully as unto the Lord, didn't he? Because he knew God. That's what he did. He worked hard. He served without any salary except the exception of his wives. For 14 years he didn't receive a wage. 
And and how did it get so? How did it go so well? He just said, "Well, I guess the Lord's one. If He wants them to have sheep, I'll have some sheep." No, Abraham. He was a great man, wasn't he? He was industrious and he worked hard because he knew God. And then he taught Isaac. What did Isaac do? He was industrious and he worked hard and he dug a whole mess of wells. What did Jacob do? He went. He woke up early. Early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. That's a good saying. He got up early. He went and worked as unto the Lord. And he's saying, I've been looking after your cattle all these years, and you've done nothing but profit it, and the whole time I haven't been able to provide for my own family. I haven't put anything back for them. Who's that picture? That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it? He made himself of no reputation. Jacob's a pretty big deal, isn't he? <laughs> he's Isaac. Now he's got the firstborn blessing of Isaac. That's a whole lot of stuff. He made... Our Lord made himself of no reputation. He took on a form of a servant. He had no place to lay his head. He didn't own any property. He didn't own any cattle. He had nothing to call his own, and at the same time, he owned everything. Jacob had all the riches that belonged to Isaac back home. But where he was, a, where he was, he was a poor servant, serving only for the love of his bride. Did you get that? Christ the Son... The God man, he owns the cattle on the thousand hills, but he came solely for his bride's sake. Solely for his bride's sake. That's what that Philippians 2 5 talks about. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, because he was, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. What's Jacob been doing for 14 years? Serving, serving. He was made the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. I want to be obedient unto death. Do you? All the way till I leave this earth, whatever it is. I don't, I'm not here. And the Lord's people after his own heart aren't in it for fame and promotion and reward. And well, I, I, this would be a good starter, church, and then I'll move it on up. No. They're there to serve just as he was. Not for their own benefit. They do it for the love of the Redeemer as he loved us, right? We love as he loved us. We serve. How's he served me? What's he done for us? Isn't that reasonable? Isn't that reasonable service for us to, to do what we can for our brethren and support the gospel? Isn't that just reasonable? People say, we well, all, uh, uh, and ever excuse, or that's reasonable if we know what he's done for us. He's given us everything. We've increased, haven't we? We were little. We were without, without anything of our own. What, what do you own? Sin. What do I have? It's mine solely. Sin, that's it. That's, all, that, I, that's rightfully mine. And Christ came, and our increase has just been amazing, hasn't it? Our sight, our hearing, <laughs> we're getting healthy. That's what we're doing. <laughs> I can run the race now. I've experienced that. Have you? There was a time, I guess it was just, this here's a good lesson in cattle raising, I guess. I don't, what do people see when they read this? I don't know. This is Christ and his bride. This is. Laban was greatly blessed for Jacob's sake, but now it's time for Jacob to provide for his own family. Verse 31. And he said, what shall I give thee? Get to it. I got it. I'm increased cost of you. <laughs> Tell me what I got to do. Jacob said, thou shalt not give me anything. Natural man comes to this matter of salvation. They say, what must I do to be saved? What must I give to be saved? What prayer must I say to be saved? What can I give God so he'll be indebted to me? He owes me. That's what natural man says, isn't it? Nothing. Nothing. You can't give him anything. I can give my heart to Jesus. No, you can't. <laughs> he don't want it. Not the one you got. Jeremiah said, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You don't even know where it is and you don't know what it is. How can you give it away? Well, I can offer my righteousness, my clean living, my morality. Can you give that to God? But we are all as an unclean thing. All of our righteousness are as filthy rags. That, was a, that wasn't a vulgar prophet. That was a prophet that was telling them 
me and what God says. Everything good we think we've done and our, our service to God and all of our writings and our sayings and my bulletin, that's, I hope I never say that again. Ain't my bulletin, that's his bulletin. Anything good I think I've ever done, you know what it is? It's used feminine hygiene products. That ain't vulgar. Vulgar is what man's pride is, thinking he's something. We can't give him our righteousness. We can't give him our clean living, can we? Can we offer our will, our doing? I'll be a good servant. No, he said, you will not come to me that you have life. What's man's will? He won't come to me. So then it's not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Natural man can't bring anything. You can't do it. Believers won't bring anything. I didn't have that wrote down. <laughs> that just popped in my head, Bob. A believer comes saying, in my hand no price I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. We have nothing to give but one thing, one thing. And that one thing is being given to us. It's the only one thing that God will accept, and that's the blood of his son. I come in his blood and nothing else. I ain't worth nothing. That's the only thing that's worth anything his blood is. Verse 31, he said, what shall I give thee? And Jacob said, thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. You're going to do something for me. Nah, you'll, you'll keep prospering. Here's the proposal. This will be a blessing to you. Verse 32. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle and all the brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and speckled among the goats. And of such shall be my hire. That'll be my hire. <laughs> I'll take all the ones you don't want. Verse 33, so shall my righteousness answer for me in the time to come. You reckon that's, you reckon that's talking about Jacob? This ain't talking about cattle farming, is it? <laughs> this is the Lord speaking there. This is a picture of him. It's showing him. He says, so shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come. You go, he's going to prove himself. You're going to see it. When it shall come from my hire before thy face, that time of judgment, Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep that shall be counted stolen with me. If there's one that slipped in here that ain't ring straight, that means blotchy rings. Ringed. Ring straight, speckled, spotted, or brown. It's stolen. You can count me a thief. All those that are speckled and spotted and brown and the goats, they're set aside for his own. He said, I'm going to take all those ugly sheep that ain't white and they're going to be mine that's going to be my hire all the ones that are blemished all the ones that have spot all that speckled with colors all that have the bands all around them they're mine all the undi undesirable breeding stock that's what I want all the undesirable ones that you can't sell nobody wants them but won't make good stock for them all the ones you can't even sell their wool what goodness they produce <laughs> it's unprofitable you get that he said that's one I want I'll take them. All the ugly ones. What's prettier? One of them beautiful English sheep that's white with the black face and stuff. They're all white. Or one that's just haggard looking. Give me the ugly ones. And all the ones that are white on the outside. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> all the ones that are white on the outside, they look like purebreds. Oh, they're so clean and pious and good. <laughs> you can keep them. I'll gather them together. I'll feed them. I'll take care of them. And think what Laban said. Man, last time you fed and took care of my sheep, I mean, there was a great increase. You're going to take all the bad ones. I get all the good ones. And then you're not going to tend to those. You're going to tend to mine? Yeah. <laughs> the offspring of the white ones that come out, if they're white, you keep them. And if they're ring streak, speckled, spotted, or brown, I'm going to take those. I'm going to move them over here with them others that are the same. And those will be mine too. And Laban said, well, you got two white sheep. What do you think is going to come out of them? What do you think is going to come out of them sheep? Yeah, right? If there's a white one in the bunch, I'll be a thief. When it comes time to settle up, and those that are mine, if there's one that's snow white, it got there on its own, I'm a thief and a robber because it didn't come by me. Right? It's a thief and a robber, and I am too. I'll be counted with it. Ain't one going to sneak its way in there, and I ain't going to miss one. 
Laban, you get all the solid white ones, and when I leave, I'll take the undesirable ones. Verse 34, and Laban said, Behold, <laughs> I, w- I would it might be according to thy word. <laughs> We're going to do it your way. Everybody listen. We're doing it his way. This is great. As far as business goes, this is a fabulous business offer, isn't it? It is. We concur with that, don't we? That's a great deal. We figured out. Have we figured out yet who the banded, speckled, spotted, and brown sheep are? We figured that out. Why so many? That's sinners. In case somebody missed that, that's us. Okay, we're the undesirable sheep in this in this equation in this story. Uh, why why not just say the ones that ain't white? Why does it say ring straked? Those patchy rings, speckled, spotted, and brown. Why does he have so many different words for that? Why does he have that? Our Lord came to save sinners. All types. Now, people get mad at me over saying that, and they just have to get mad because that's good news to sinners. He came to save all types. What kind of types? Well, ring, straight, speckled, spotted, and brown. That's what it is in sheep. What is it in people? Fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate. That's massive in this generation, isn't it? Effeminate, abusers, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners. Is that you? I'm leading up to something. Is that in your DNA? Not on the outside. On the inside. You extort? Are you drunk on the inside, on false religion, on Babylon's wine? Who cares if you knock down a shot of Jack Daniels? (laughs) Is this on the inside? Is that you? Is that your DNA? Is that all you can do? Paul says, and such were some of you. It? But you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. <laughs> God calls it clean, don't you dare call it unclean. There's some people that find fault with the Lord's preachers. Out of love, I caution, caution them, wherever they may be, if that's God's person. He said, touch not my anointing, that's you too. If you profess to believe Christ, God's washed away all your sin. He bore your sin and shame on the cross. You better not call them unclean. Better not. He said, you do it to one of these little ones, you're doing it to me, isn't he? They're one with you. That's what Paul was saying, though. It's our DNA. It's, we read Romans 7. <laughs> Boy, there's something in me that everything it wants to do is wrong. It only does wrong. And there's a part of me that wants to do good and it can't do good. And there's just a war going on. That's on the inside. What if he's sitting still and has hair comb? Yeah, it's happening. That's happening, isn't it? Jeremiah said, Can the Ethiopian change its skin or the leopard's its spots? If we're ring straight, speckled, spotted, or brown, we can't do nothing about it. We may look around, you know, I was thinking a sheep could look around and say, Boy, I'm all white, except for right there. <laughs> isn't it? Right between the eyes. <laughs> What's most obvious to everybody else, it can't see. Can an Ethiopian change its skin? Can a leopard change its spots? I, I couldn't remember where that was at. I wanted to plug that in there this morning. And so I Googled it. I cheated. And I was like, can an Ethiopian change its skin? KJV, right? And Google popped up and said, according to two sources, no. <laughs> according to one source. Isn't that? Mankind wants two or three of everything, don't we? Uh, yeah, according to one source, he said it at the end. Isn't that? We can't do it. He says, then may ye also do good, which are accustomed to do evil. We can't, can we? Verse 35. That was the deal. Laban said, you betcha. (laughs) And he removed that day, verse 35. And he removed that day the he goats that were ring straked and spotted and all the she goats that were speckled and spotted and every one that had some white in it and all the brown among the sheep and gave them to the hands of his sons. That's Laban's sons. Didn't he say that's what he's going to do? Well, this says he did it. Is that important? God does what he says he's going to do. And we ought to do the best we can to do what we say we're going to do as his children, shouldn't we? He does what he says he's going to do. Verse 36. And he set three days' journey betwixt himself and Jacob. And Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flock. Jacob took all them (coughs) spotted, (laughs) ugly sheep. And gave them to Laban's boys to watch. 
And he went three days away. And he took care of all his white ones, didn't he? The Lord takes care of those that are self-righteous. Rain falls on them. Those that are just at war with him and cursing his name. Uh, broccoli grows the same for them as it does for us, doesn't it? And as a picture, we're in this world. We have this evil world to, we had to work. We can't eject ourselves from it. We can't hide in a cave somewhere and just not. Do, you got to go out and make a living. You got to go grocery store. <laughs> you got to do these things. We got to live in this world. Lord's ruling and reigning over it all, isn't he? He is. And he put three days journey. What's the difference between them? This is beautiful. This is short. What's the difference between all them ugly sheep and them real pretty sheep? One, they're Jacob's. Because he put three days journey between them. Didn't our Lord do that? Are we three days apart from our sin? Because he laid three days in the grave. Isn't it? This will prove, being three days apart, this will prove Jacob is dealing justly, rightly. There will be three days of separation. Those herds, herds can't mix and he can't be accused of doing anything that's not right. And they can't produce life together. Do you get that? They can't intermix. To prove his holiness, to prove himself a just God and a Savior, Christ was three days removed. It was not as if he was not pretending he's not a thief. Jacob was over Laban's white flock, and Laban, Laban's voice tended to Jacob's undesirable flock. Blessed is the physical nation, isn't it? And we're in this world. Verse 37, And Jacob took him rods of green poplar and of hazel, and chestnut tree, and he peeled white strakes, little strips in them, and made them made the white appear, which was in the rods. I'd like to spend three or four months on that. Uh, green poplar, uh, it, they actually have white leaves, uh, white blooms. We have tulip poplars here. What do they do? We know that, don't we, honey? <laughs> we had a 120-foot tulip poplar fall through our house. It's four foot wide. They grow real fast. That's why contractors use them around subdivisions. It's, it's evidence of life real fast, isn't it? Boy, they're alive. They grow like crazy. Well, what about them hazels? They produce fruit. You can't eat a poplar tree, but you can eat hazelnuts. And what kind of fruit's that? Sweet fruit. Sweet fruit, isn't it? Well, what about a chestnut tree? Build old barns out of them. They're strong. They endure. Long-lasting, isn't it? He takes all three of those combines them, binds them together, and he peeled white strakes in them, white stripes on Calvary's cross, on that wood. That was life given to us because by his stripes we are healed. That's a sweet-smelling savor, isn't it? Is that sweet to you, sweeter than honey? It's going to last forever. It's going to last forever. He did that, and he made the white appear which was in the rods. If we don't see him, who he is, and what he accomplished, if that don't break your heart, he, he got, they, the, the father struck him because of me. We have to see that. That's why it has to appear. His holiness. That's what that thief said, isn't it? There ain't no guilt in him. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Verse 38, and he set the rods which he had pulled before the flocks in the gutters, in the water troughs, when the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. He took those, that wood, stripes in it, those rods, and he stuck it in the gutter of the watering troughs. He saved to the gutter most, doesn't he? Way down low. That's where we are, with our heads bowed down in it. When they come to drink, they conceived. If we consume that living water, who he is and what he did, if he gives us a thirst for that, there's going to be life. There's going to be conception. And there's going to be offspring because then people's going to love each other and they're going to work together to further the gospel. It's going to happen. And the flocks conceived before the rods, verse 39, and brought forth cattle. These are all the white ones. Right? On the outside. They brought forth cattle. Ring strikes, speckled and spotted. Every one of their the kids, that's what a kid is, is a, a offspring of a goat or a sheep, right? 
all them little, all its kids, they're all ring straight, speckled, and spotted. How could that happen? They didn't know anything about recessive traits in DNA, did they? We think mankind discovers something God did, and we think we're brilliant, don't we? That's recessive DNA. What about light speaking them stars singing? Spectrum analysis. That's what we call it. Man thought the earth was flat for a couple thousand years. If they'd have read Isaiah, they'd have known better. He sits on the circle of the earth, doesn't he? Lightning. Lightning comes up from the ground, not down. That's the way the light bulb moves. He says, it says, here I am. It calls to him. All the offspring was that. What's that mean? There's a DNA problem. It ain't what the outside looks like. It's not the outside, the whited sepulcher. You're just painting up dead, dead men's bones. Oh, you are. It's what's in the heart. That's all we can produce. That's all those things could produce, isn't it? Verse 40, And Jacob did separate the lambs and set the faces of the flock towards the ring straked, and all the brown in the flock of Laban. And he put his own flocks by themselves and put them not unto Laban's cattle. They can't go back. He separated them. They can't go back. They can't go drink of them other waters. Can you? You ever you ever go to a funeral or something, of, of, and, and you got to get up and hear just nonsense, and everybody's getting preached into heaven. And <laughs> go, listen to a funeral of a famous person that died. <laughs> they, they drive a severe drug overdose, riotous living, and curse God up to let them. They're in a better place now. I can't drink that. I can't. It's up to you. I can't drink that. you got to make yourself holy. I can't drink that. I can't. Why? God separated us. So he said, Jeremiah 23, he said, they, I, I didn't send these people, and they will not profit my people. I'll keep them separated. They're sanctified. Verse 41, And it came to pass, when, whensoever the strong cattle did conceive, that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters. He just showed it to them. You getting stout and strong, you can do it by yourself. Look here. <laughs> I was getting a little too big for my britches one day. My pastor reminded me of who Christ was and what he did for me. It came to pass whenever the stronger cattle did conceive that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods. That's where your children's going to come from. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So the feeblers were Laban's and the stronger's Jacob's. How'd that flip-flop? I thought, you know, just in practicality, Thomas, you had a dog. Them purebreds ain't nothing but trouble. Ain't that right? They got hip dysplasia and, and all kinds of things that's wrong with them are expensive. They have nothing but illnesses. They're sick all the time, ain't they? What about them old mutts, them dogs? You don't have to ever take them to a doctor. <laughs> that cattle lived to 45 years old. <laughs> Won't it? The elder shall serve the younger. Because the Lord is the strength of his people. Those that look so feeble look like mutts. He's their strength. Well, they prove stronger in the end, don't they? Everything else is like fig leaves. It's going to wilt. You ever seen a leaf? You just let it dry out and touch it, and it goes to just crumbs, don't it? And it goes right back into dirt. Verse 43, And the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and maid servants and mid servants and camels and asses. <laughs> Our Lord's increased greatly, hasn't he? I don't, I don't give my thoughts much. I do some. I don't give my thoughts much. But I'll bet you a paycheck. It ain't mentioned. Whenever Jacob's going to leave, he's going to go back home. All those that are ring straight, speckled, spotted, and brown, they're going to go with him. And they're going back to Canaan, the promised land. And I bet you whenever he took them there, as soon as they crossed that threshold in there, everyone was white as snow. <laughs> you're going to be. You're going to be. If you're white now, it ain't going to do you no good. It ain't going to do you no good. He's going to make us. And how can I, who, who can bring a, a, a clean thing out of an unclean thing? He can. And it takes just the power to do so to make an unclean thing out of a clean thing. When we think we're so white and so glorious and so majestic and precious, and the, for God to come and say, oh, you know what, I'm a sinner. I ain't nothing. I'm speckled all over. That's just my DNA. He has to do that too. A sinner is a precious thing. The Holy Spirit's made them so. He's built it to us, hasn't he?
Amen. All right. One more hymn. Verse, not verse 51, hymn 51. <laughs>